Hello, Blake Root is here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I want to show you this cool matte effect that you can get in your images. Well, it's not just cool, it's also warm, but I'm going to show you that. And this, this effect is something that you see in portrait work all the time now, and it's really simple to achieve. It just makes your shadow areas look a little bit more on the gray side, but gives you this kind of subliminal feeling inside when you look at the image. So here we have an image of Yosemite. I'm not showing a portrait here, I'm showing a landscape. But you can see how my darks are really dark. Well, here is the matte effect with no color. Here is the matte effect in like a bluish tinge, and here is the matte effect in a warm kind of tinge. And I've got some actions here that you're free to download, but please watch this tutorial before you download the action so that you can understand exactly what's happening to your image before you press play on anything. So let's go ahead and jump in and get into this. So this matte effect, or this like, um, sometimes people call it like a crushed shadow effect or a crushed black effect. It really is all over the place and we don't even realize it. Sometimes we just get this feeling inside. We're like, ooh, I'm feeling all nice and warm and gooey because of the look of this image and I don't even know why. Well, it happens subliminally. And one of my favorite places to get stock images from is a place called Pexels. And look at Pexels.com. If you just type in the word portrait up here, you can see where like this image right here, the blacks right here are just really kind of pushed down and they've been filled in with like this blue bluish kind of color. Same thing is happening in this image. Um, some Sometimes you see it a little bit on the warmer side, like in this image, a little bit on the greener side, like in this image. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to show you in Photoshop, and it's really actually very simple. I'm going to show you a couple different ways. The first way is going to be a matte effect with no color added. The second way is a matte effect with color added, and then a matte effect with a contrast boost, and then a black and white look where you can get a nice little uh, matte effect with some color or with Without some color if you so desire and I also have a bunch of actions here for you also so don't run away from this tutorial without downloading them but watch the tutorial first so you can get an understanding of how these things work and then you can do the automated stuff with the actions okay so the first thing we really need to do here is go into our adjustment layers down below and grab a curves adjustment layer and in this curves adjustment layer when we look at the curves adjustment layer here this bottom area here controls our darkest darks with the very lowest portion being our dark darks and this being our middle darks. This is our midtones and this is our highlights. So to really crush down these shadows, we need to add some anchor points. So I'm going to add an anchor point here and an anchor point here and an anchor point here. So three anchor points on the main areas and the center points of where uh, things can be affected. All right, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to grab this little tail end here of our curves adjustment and I'm going to move it up and watch what happens when I do that. You see how my blacks are now lifted a little bit. Well, if you really pay attention to what's happening here, I'll delete these anchor points so you can see what's happening, is we're telling Photoshop that use this curve to make anything that is black a new tonal profile. So when we move this up, we're saying all the things that are black now start turning a slight gray. And we can keep moving that up until we say all the things that are black turn white and now our image is pure white because we're telling it throughout the whole contrast of our image to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until there's nothing left. Well, we really just want to smash those blacks down a little bit or kind of condense those blacks and to give them a little bit more tonal grade when it comes to like maybe a, a mid-tone color or something. So all you have to do is grab this little adjustment in the bottom and move it up to about right there. I'd say about a third of the way up the curves adjustment layer and then build those anchor points again because when we build those anchor points, that's gonna say, do that, but don't affect my midtones or my highlights. And one of the great things about this is if we do the before and after here, is we can also come in and we can use one of Blake's favorite things now, which is blend if to protect things even more. So if I double click on this curves adjustment layer, I can come down here and say, okay, these are the black areas. If I move this over, our effect is not gonna have any effect on our blacks. Well, I don't want that. But if I move this over, that's going to protect all of my highlights into my midtones from what's happening here. And if I press Alt or Option, I can split and feather that over. So that's really just an added protection measure to ensure that my highlights and my midtones aren't getting affected by this adjustment of our uh, shadow areas there by getting it more of that a gray tonal quality to them. And if I even go a little bit further, I can change this here to luminosity to ensure that it only affects the tones in the image. So if we turn that off and we turn it on, you can see the difference now. It really just takes our blacks and lifts them up a little bit, gives them a little bit of a gray tone to them so that nothing is actually pure black. 
So now if we wanted to add a little bit of color to this, what we'd want to do is we want to go ahead and change this back to normal, okay? Because if we want to add some color to it, the luminosity blend mode is not going to allow us to add color. If we come up here to this drop down for RGB, what we have selected by default right now is the red, green, and blue channels combined together to give us the, the overall luminance of the image that we're editing here. That's why things are getting darker and lighter within all of the channels. But if we were to go into the red channel here and make those same anchor points on those same spots and then come in here, we could then move this up to add a little bit of red tinge to the black, or we can move it down and over like this to add a little bit of cyan to that. So if we bump that up, just a little bit of red there, that gives us a little bit of warmth. But if we wanted to make it a little bit more on the orange side, because this is giving us a lot of red, we would come over here and go to blue at our anchor points. And the opposite of blue is going to be yellow. So if we move this up, it's going to add a little bit of blue to our image. If we move this over, it's going to add some more yellow to the image or give us more of that orange type of tinge to the uh, shadow areas. We can do the opposite there too. Let's say instead of using red, we turned red off and we started using blue, we can now cool it down or warm it up. In the process of this, you might actually lose some contrast. So one of the things that you can do is go into your adjustment layer here and go to brightness and contrast and just bump up the contrast overall in the entire image by about 20, anywhere from 10 to 20. It really depends on what you want to get back in the image. So if we turn these eyeballs off, you can see the difference there. Here we don't have any warmth in those shadow areas, but now we've got this sunset feel to the image that we didn't have before, and it's so very subliminal. It's one of those things that we don't even realize that when we look at the image, that there is a little bit of warmth in those shadows until we really start to look with the trained eye. So one thing we can also do, let's go ahead and delete this brightness and contrast layer. I'm just going to go ahead and drop that down into my trash bucket there and delete it. If I were to come down here on top of this background layer, and if my brush palette is set to black and white, you can press D to default them back to black and white, come down here and make a gradient map. And now we can use this curves adjustment layer on a black and white image to give our image a slight tone to it, uh, but it's still in the black and white side but we get to add some of these tones to it. If we wanted to affect the colors that are in there, again, just go to that curves adjustment layer, maybe go into the greens now, and you can add some green tinge to those areas too. And these are just quick little tips on how to get that gradient map or your black and white image to have some color to it, just very subtle color, so it's subliminal. If I go in here to my actions in this Matte Effects F64 Academy on the download that I'm giving you, if you were to click Matte Effect No Color and press play, it's going to give you the curves adjustment layer for the just the, the, just the blacks being lifted up a little bit, or the shadows being lifted up without any color. If you were to press play on the warm, it's going to give you that lifted feel with some warmth to it. If you press play on the cool, it's going to do the same thing, but give you the cool effect or the bluish effect. And then if you were to select uh, this warmth and press play and then the contrast boost, that's that boost I was telling you about where we just gave it a little bit of oomph in that contrast to get some of that back. And then right down here, we have our black and white conversion layer. If we press play on this, it's going to give us that conversion and we can just drag that underneath those color areas to get those colors back or leave it right on the top so that we can uh, have a black and white image with that lifted kind of black feel or that matte effect or the crushed shadows, whatever you want to call it. There's many different terms for it now. It's a huge thing in portrait work now. As I said, if you go over to Pexels or any stop photography website for that matter and just type in the word portrait, you're going to see this matte effect all over the place. And it's really simple and easy to achieve. All we really have to do is go into that curves adjustment layer and make sure we just lift those blacks a little bit and taper down some anchor points so that we don't move the whole curve up a little bit. Really simple to do. I'm just showing you some more advanced techniques that you can mix and match in here with it and even giving you some action that you can just press play on and enjoy. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy. If you like this, please comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, because if you haven't done so already, I give these tutorials out practically every Friday. I say practically because there's sometimes that I slip. It's hard sometimes to just stay really consistent with that. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.